Hello and welcome to Martin Lucas Investors channel. My name is Sensei Crypto and I'm here doing the Sunday show, the, the show of crypto, the show of charts, the show where we discuss gold, silver, all sorts of financial markets and um, financial assets. So thank you all for being here. <clears throat> Sorry for the one minute delay. Uh, I do have the live chat up, so if anyone wants to ask any questions, we have a poll running right now if it's going to be a green or um, a red week. If you are watching this in the future, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it's good to be back. We took last week off. It was Easter Sunday, I believe. So we are back now. <clears throat> Let's have a look at some of your comments. Oh. What has happened here? Oh, that's been a bit weird. Let's see what we... Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was a little bit strange. Let's have a look at the comments. We've got James here. Good evening, Sensei. Good evening, Lucas. Sensei, last week I told you about Nerdminer V2 Bitcoin Miners. I have found a much better one for a little bit more money. Please see Lucky Miner. That... Oh, yes. It's much higher hash rate. Oh, interesting. Have you got yourself one, James007? like to um know if you've got yourself one as well if you've already set yours up 137 pounds it seems like this one is just looking at it now well that's good news SBC, please where's the bottom how far can this go get down will it be bankrupt we'll have a look at SBC. could it go bankrupt of course it can go bankrupt will it go back will it go bankrupt i cannot give you that information but i you'd hope not um, but I'm not here to say whether or not something's going bankrupt. Um, when something like Fisker happens and the news comes out, I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough to say more likely than not it's going to be bankrupt and more likely than not it still is going to get bankrupt. But with something like SBC, I'm not, I'm not happy to say more likely than not SBC is going bankrupt. We don't have enough information for that. Um, SBC can thrive very well as a company. Um, it could be a very high value zone. Um, we've got Zach Zate here. He's he's a good SB, um a great SBC fan. You can see SBC um he's he's shown us the SBC factories and and stuff like that. So that's always good to see. Thank you, Zach, for doing that. Mike is here and Martin Lucas Investor is here as well. Uh, Mike is here. Good evening, Eric B is here. Let's see how many people we have on the show and how many likes we have. Let's refresh that and let's get into the show. So we have 16 likes, which is amazing. Thank you so much, 36 people watching. We are going to be looking at the FSR chart as well. And let's see how that's training um, Sound, Hound and SBC as well. And let's have a look at Bitcoin because we are going to see a um, the, the halvening coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll get the halvening calculated, but I, I believe it, it's in less than two weeks. Um, let's have a look at countdown let's have a look at the countdown and see how far away we are <clears throat> 11 days wow so by the time i see you guys next bit the, the halving would have taken place because next week i'm not available for the show it's the first show i'm actually taking off so let's have a apart from holidays of course easter sunday and stuff like that i can't stream but next week um I am away on holiday, so <laughs> I can't be streaming. Um, if anything significant happens, of course, I'm always here to update you. But right now, we've got the halvening happening in 11 days, 7 hours. Of course, what the halvening is, is the rate of mining of Bitcoin will be halved. Half the amount um, will be halved. Um, um, the difficulty gets harder to be mining those Bitcoin. Um, so we'll see the supply of Bitcoin um, dramatically decrease, um, which normally has has led to a bull run maybe not in the first couple of weeks but but down the line months um that's what normally kickstarts um the the aggressive side of the bull run um and that's why i'm expecting in 2024 going into 2025 so we'll discuss that as well um we'll all be millionaires in two weeks time says mike let's hope so um James says Bitcoin. We're gonna, um, says I'm going to get a Bitcoin LV06 miner. Um, that is the one you just told me about, isn't it, James? Um, is this the same concept where you um, you just you're waiting to get lucky to see if you can just 
uh, manage to mine a block. Is, is, it, is it the same concept as the other one we were looking at a couple of weeks ago? Just let, let me know. Okay, so let's have a look at the charts. We've got Tesla up right now, but let's have a quick run through of the charts um, to see how everything closed on Friday and we can have a look at the weekly candle closes. Should we get a bit of music going as well to um let's do the stock race, but everything's closed, so let's let's do it like that. We'll go through all the stocks, the crypto, and then we'll um discuss your uh, the the main events of the the show today, which is FSR, Soundhound, SVCE, and any other requests you have. But first, let's just do a market rundown and let's put the music on. The year is 1991. Birds and people are living together in seemingly perfect harmony. Until one day, a young man catches fire. Let's go through them. This I'm going to go through the highest the gamers on Friday. So starting off, we have Nicola up 7%. What a trade we had on Nicola. If you remember two weeks ago when I did my live trading session on Tuesday, we, we entered a position at about 60 cents. So far, we've made night we basically yeah, doubled our money. And if you're looking at how we closed on Friday, we're up 71%. So congratulations to all. Um, we're up 71% in a matter of two weeks, so please do take your profits. But there is also targets higher up. Meta was also up 3.21%. Um, <clears throat> let's just make sure we can hear it. Just making sure you guys can hear me. So yes, then we've got Meta up 3.2%. Um, on Friday, let's put the weekly candle on. So every single one of these candles represents a week. Let's see how the weekly candles are closing. That is the highest weekly candle for Meta ever. Then we've got Netflix up three percent. That looks like the uh, not the highest um, weekly candle close for Netflix, but it's getting there. It's it's um, definitely the highest of 2024. Um, we've got Amazon up 2.8%. That is approaching all-time highs. Amazon is 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 in full uh, ball phase right now. Um, Lyft. Um, not looking brilliant. It's, it's near its all-time lows. Um, by that I mean obviously it can drop 50% and it will still not be at its all-time lows. But, it, but it's, it seems to be consolidating at between its all-time lows at $7. Um, it's in a consolidation phase. I, I, I do believe we have to see a bit more data before we decide whether or not we are bullish on lift. Palantir. Um, it's gone through all our buy, um, sell zones. so. Palantir, it wouldn't be a buy for me right now. Um, we've then got Microsoft all-time highs, not buy for me. Google hit all-time highs this week. Nasdaq, all, uh, the weekly candle close. It does seem like we might be coming down next week for the Nasdaq. It seems like we might be topping out. A 5% correction will take us back to the moving averages. We've then got the SP 500, which we'll have a deeper look at, but it did end the week down. Um, but it was up 1% on Friday. Disney, um, no action since our buy zone. You're at the top of the range, so I'd be careful with Disney, but, but we've got our buys in our very good levels at $80. It's too loud, so, so let's turn it down. Hopefully you can hear me now. So then we've got Berkshire Hathaway, which is up 0.76 on Friday. Then we've got Dollar Tree, with someone's request. I think we entered the buy zone for that, our first buy zone. We've got Shopify up 0.63%. Russell 2000 up 0.47%. Rap Technologies up 0.45%. That was our, we, we hit our uh, sell zone around $4.40. We are currently at our first buy zone at $2.24. Apple is up 0.45. That's better now, thank you. Um, Apple is up 0.45% on Friday. We've then got Coca-Cola, which is in this downwards trend. It, it tried to break out the trend, but unfortunately it didn't break out to the upside. So again, our buy zone on Coca-Cola, if it doesn't hold this moving average is where it is now, if we break below $60 and stay below $60, we are definitely coming down. Well, not definitely, but, but most likely chart-wise coming back down to $53. AMC up 0.33%. I won't look into that too much. Um, we've then got the DXY, which is pretty flat on the week. Um, we've got Pfizer. Pfizer is at the buy zone. It's still at the buy zone. Oh, let's not move that. Pfizer is still at the buy zone um, at 26.45. So it tried, it's this moving average it needs to break out of. It's, it's all well and good having this lowest entry zone, which we're in right now. 
but it needs to break out of these two moving averages to then be on its way to $34 and beyond. Um, but it's still a very low risk area to be holding buying Pfizer, in my opinion. Um, we've then got Johnson Johnson back in, it's actually in a buy zone right now. $152 is a buy zone for um, Johnson Johnson. The next one will be $143. Um, Snapchat is at $11. Um, not really a trade for me on Snapchat, but again, if you did want to buy Snapchat, I'd be waiting until about nine dollars. $9. Robinhood, it's we, we've we've got our entries well, well, but before this 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 rise again, there's not much between here and thirty three dollars for Robinhood. That's been our target, and that's going to continue being my target. As you can see, it it, it fell very quickly between thirty three dollars and sixteen dollars. So there's no reason we can't go up just as fast. So that's what we're looking for thirty three dollars. It's already above its moving averages. Um, yes, it can go up to thirty-three dollars, and that's that's my target. But again, even if it comes down to twelve dollars before it does that, that is perfectly normal. It will come and test the moving averages. It will come in and put a higher low. More people will be holding it, and and then the target is still going to be thirty-three dollars. So even if this has a 10 20 percent correction, the target for me is still thirty-three dollars. We've got Rivian. Base is at all-time lows this week. Yes, it's made all-time lows this week. There's there's no there's no knowing how low this can go. Again, um, it's very hard. It's very very hard to be a successful EV company. Um, I think the only two EV is the only two car com the EV com. I think it's the only two car manufacturing companies that are in the US and that haven't gone bankrupt yet is like Tesla and Ford, and Ford's on the way to that. So it's very very hard industry to be in. Um, so even with the big, the big dogs like Rivian, you have to still be careful. Um, I remember when everyone was buying this at $150, no? Yeah, I remember after IPO, people were paying $150 for this stock and I just would not touch it. Um, this hasn't had any reverse splits or anything. It's gone from 150 or $177 to $10. So obviously much better value now than it was before um, but you still have to be careful um, but if you love the company then then what what better time than buying at all time lows um, uh, you have to start looking at the market cap do you think the company's worth more or less than 10 billion if you think it's worth more then you should be buying it um, look at the fundamentals first um, we've then got uh, ARK Invest our buy zones very clearly on the channel of thirty five dollars. Is there? There's not really a buy. Buy. But I wouldn't be buying it now. It's actually just falling below its moving averages. So we might have another entry zone at thirty five dollars. Um, Chinese stock Baba is back in its buy zone. I think this is a good long term hold, um, and it's at its buy zone at seventy one dollars. Um, this is this this should be a, a couple hundred dollar stock. I wonder what Alpha Spread says about Baba. Um, because I've looked at the fundamentals privately and, 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 and come to that conclusion, I'm sure Alpha Spread will come to the same conclusion. Let's have a look here. Again, Alpha Spread is the technology we use for all our fundamental analysis. You've seen Martin use it for his um reviews as well, so you can always find the the the, the referral link in the description. Um, yes, undervalued by 36%. Um, the intrinsic values in the hundreds of dollars are $111. Best case is $158. Worst case, it's, it's it's actually undervalued by 11%, even at worst case. So, Barbara is, even though if, if, if you're completely against Chinese stocks for whatever reason, okay, ignore it. But if you're happy to have a diverse portfolio, I think Barbara is um, one of those ones that is just being put, put down for, for no real reason. Um, um let's have a look at there yeah 1.8 in assets 810 in liabilities um but yeah look at that the revenue is just just to show you one thing about alibaba stock is in 2015 when it was trading around these areas 2015 and 2016 that 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 that's the area we are at right now we're at 71 dollars and the last time it traded at that level ignoring sort of um <clears throat> recent times we're looking at 2015 where it traded at, at, at that sort of 60 uh, 66 dollars 71 dollars 
when you look at the the fundamentals in 2015 the revenue of this um, company was 80 billion today the revenue is 900 billion that's a that's a factor of 10 so it's 10 times it's got 10 times more revenue um their their net income is up double um so you can see their revenue and operating income is up that much but the stock is at the same price so that's just one stock i've been looking at um let's continue etsy um we are on the weekly candle, so every single candle you see here represents a week. Um, Etsy, nothing too special for me. McDonald's is, well, it's had a bad week, McDonald's. McDonald's has had a very bad week, um, down nearly 6%. So we look at the trend line. something like that yeah i mean we're coming up to if it breaks this trend then you're coming down to 230 dollars um but it could bounce at 257 dollars we've then got lucid which has made all-time lows this week not quite but a couple of cents away from making all-time lows uh one cent away from making all-time lows again that's another example of a um an ev company that's that's probably not going to make it in the stock market but again now lucid is six billion rivian's nine billion i would rather be holding rivian and it's the, the market caps are not that far apart now then we've got spce which we'll have um, a deeper look at in a second i'll make a video about spce in a second um so let me message martin we're gonna do spce um, but yeah, SBC all time lows this week is actually down. It's down 16% this week. It's what we've been saying. It's, you can't fight the trend. Um, we'll do a video about that in a second. We've then got Fiverr, which is um, looking like. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Fiverr looking like it's going to test its all time lows. So that's that's another one. I'd rather be buying things at all time lows than be buying them at all time highs, um, especially if it's a company that that I believe is undervalued. And Fiverr with a market cap of under a billion, I think that's um, I think it's a good business model, um, and I think it might be getting it pretty undervalued now. So um, keep that in consideration. We've then got Soundhound AI. We'll do a video on that as well. So let me message uh no i'll message it in a second but yeah sound hound would be um if james says bless you thank you lucid there's divergence with the rsi i say it's a trend change let's go back to lucid and answer um divergence with the rsi what time frame are we looking at it depends if we make um another low really because the, the, the lows are the same i mean yeah i guess there is on the weekly let's go on the daily as well yeah it could be but but it could be triple bu uh, bullish divergence or there could be divergence and it can keep going down so you, it's hard to say this is going to be a bottom but yeah i mean there could be a trend change let's let's see how the next couple of weeks play out um if you like the the company lucid you're at all-time low so you can start dollar cost averaging in now um because as you said this this there is divergence so it could um it's good could start changing trends so that's a good thanks for pointing that out let's have a look at your questions um Dustin I just added it to my watch notes last week. Okay, I'm gonna go through the charts before I start answering some more questions. I've been in there three times. Bless you, my <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. Let's have a look at Stacey. Uh aside from the merger that Martin will be pinned at the top. Can we also look at the XRP and stablecoin news and how that will affect XRP and X? Yeah, we can. Um, just to warn you, I'm not the biggest. Of course, I've been investing in crypto since 2015, I would say. 
but I don't I don't look at the fundamentals as much as I look at the technicals and the and the and the trends and 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 um, the market sentiment and and how traders trade. That's how I that's how I make my money with crypto. I don't look at how much the fundamentals matter. It's all it once it comes to halvening and the cycles, you just have to pick the correct narratives and it can be any odd odd coin um so I, i'm not terribly educated in, it, in how the ins and outs of everything work but we can definitely have a look at it um but if you want to the fundamental news I'd, I'd, I'd recommend doing your own research um let's go through let's continue going through this we've got mullen which is again um um another ev company that's just 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 doesn't it's just not made it has it really 26 million dollar market cap um more likely than not going bankrupt. So then we've got GME, Rocket Lab, and Rocket Rocket Lab's in its buy zone, but I have been warning, just because something's in, in its buy zone doesn't mean it's going to come out as buy zone, test the buy zone as resistance, and then start making new lows. So that's something to be wary of. We've got Luna, which has had another bad week. Um, it's, it's been down ever since the, the flight for Luna. Bless you, my child. Ha ha. <laughs> Thank you. Let's turn up the sound effects. Thank you very much, Stacey. Um, um, Stacey Bailey. Then got Tilray. Wow, what a trade. We're gonna do a Tilray video as well, I think, because this this trade has been one of one of a, again, this was three weeks ago, and in three weeks this trade has made Again, another hundred percent or ninety three percent. We then got Coinbase, which again, this was a trade that was from, from a while ago, which is we're now up three hundred forty five percent. Coinbase, we've hit our buy uh, our sell zone. So for now, it can go back down to two hundred eight dollars, and if it does, then our next target is three hundred fifty two dollars. Tesla, what have we been saying for the longest time? Don't kick, don't have your money stuck in Tesla while there's so many other opportunities. Tesla has just been making lower highs. Less people are holding the stock. Less people are excited about the stock. Yes, it's a great stock. In five, ten years, I believe it's a one thousand dollar stock. But for now, the momentum is down. Don't fight the trend. The trend is to the downside. No need to fight the trend. Just go with the trend. And the trend has been down. Um, and it looks like one hundred fifty dollars is next. Um, micro strategy. There's no point being invested in that because that is just. I mean, there was a point being invested, but now that it's 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 gone up thousands or a thousand percent in in not too long of a time, I don't want to be holding something that's done that. Even though it could probably go higher if Bitcoin halving goes well, that stock's definitely going to go uh, higher. Um, let's have a quick look at the cryptos. We've got Bitcoin, which is looking good. Um, what I would be worried about, just because I probably won't be here for the halving. What I would say is there might be a little rally up in the next couple of weeks towards the halvening. The day of the halvening, be very, very careful. Don't be trading with leverage either way. My thoughts are it's probably going to come down. Um, it's probably going to sell off on the day. And then in, in the week after, it's probably going to continue going up. Um, and there's going to be some... The, the news is going to be covering it. So the day of the halvening, be careful. It's probably going to go down, sell the news event. And then the, and a couple of days later, it will probably continue going up. So we might have 100K Bitcoin in a month. Um, but we also might drop down to 60,000 or 50,000 on the day of the halvening. It just depends how the narrative is pushed and what the, what the, what the whales want. To happen to the to the coin, but remember, in the longer term, within a year, the, 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 I, I believe Bitcoin is going to be at two hundred thousand. So it doesn't really matter what happens in the short term. You just don't want to be caught out trading it or selling or not being prepared with a plan beforehand. Just know it's going to be a volatile few weeks. Let's listen in. Can you do a quick look at size? It's new, so there is not much to go off of, but maybe you will see something. Okay, yeah, of course. If you give a super chat, of course, I'll look at that straight away. Let's have a look at it. DX. Why is that? As you said, if there's not a lot of... Is this what we're looking at? Destiny Tech 100? Just let me know if, if this is the, is it, is it the Destiny Tech 100 and we'll have a look at it. Uh, let's have a quick look at the comments while I wait for you to confirm that's the right thing you want to have a look at. 
just dropped in. Hey, everyone, wonder if sent to a brief to check out CIS. I, w I will, um, once I do the main ones for the show, which is SBC, Sound, Tilray, um, and FSR, we might have a look at FSR. Once I do them, then please do send your requests. But right now, I, I won't be able to keep a note of everyone's requests until I've finished that. Um, oh, Bitcoin, I think they're using people to scoop up their money. Be careful, folks, says Echo Echo. Hey, look at the charts for Nasdaq 100. Give me your prediction of the name. I'm shorting the Nasdaq app at the moment. Just from what I remember, just looking at it now, it did look like a topping out structure. But I'll be I'll be careful when when. But we can have another look at it. Just just remind me after I do the the main charts of the show. So all these requests, thank you for all the requests. But do do let me know in about five ten uh, in about twenty minutes once I finish up all the videos. Um, we talked about the divergence on the RSI for Lucid. Thank you, Abram Wolf. Trake says. Um, Hey Dustin. Oh, just add it. Shall I add that time watch list as well? DX. We're gonna have a look at it now, actually. For Stacy Bailey. Um, aside from the merger that Martin pinned at the top, can we just look at the XRP and still? How effective? To be honest, I'm not going to. I don't, I don't want to say something wrong and um, give the wrong wrong analysis on it, so I'm probably not going to comment on it too much. But all I would say, in terms of, um, in terms of, firstly, the the thing that was pinned to, to the top, I haven't seen that news. Um, I've saw it briefly, but I, I'm sure it's probably going to be good for the coin. If the fundamentals are good, it's probably going to be good that they're all merging and they're putting all their um, resources together to help. Um, in the fundamentals of the coin, um, but I personally don't have too much news on it and I don't have time to research it in today's show. Um, in terms of the XRP and stablecoin news, I've, I've seen more about that. Um, and, and I would say overall bullish, very, very bullish. Um, that's good. It's good for XRP. It's good for the company Ripple for when Ripple IPOs. That's another reason I would want to be investing in their stock. Um, another reason to be holding XRP because it's going to be on the XRP ledger um, as well as the Ethereum. Um, and we don't have that many good stable coins right now. Um, USDT, no no real regulation. They just keep printing out of nowhere. And then USDC, we've seen the problems with USDC being delisted and not holding its peg sometimes. So USDC seems to be the only good one. But now if we have one being created by Ripple, the company that's regulated by the SEC um, in partnership with also a coin that's regulated by the SEC and not security, I couldn't be more bullish for the company or for what that has for the XRP ledger. So I think it's good. I think it's good news. How it affects XLM, if XRP goes up, it's just the market takes up XLM. So it's good for Stellar as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think I'm, I'm very bullish on that news. Some people are saying on Twitter, you can see everyone saying random things like, oh, um, it doesn't mean anything or um, that it's the end of XRP because there's now a stable coin that does the same thing. It, it, it's just all noise. Um, it's a company that's that's doing the right thing, um, and and the stablecoin market is going to be so big. It's going to 10x over the next five years. Um, that I think is a really good move. Um, so I, I think it's bullish. I'm bullish on that news. Um, Dustin Turner, I've been in and out three times. I'm buying. Um, is this about DX? Yeah, I've been in and out three times, but thinking about buying and holding if there's a dip soon. We'll have a look at it now. We can have, we can also make a video if a lot of people are interested about it. Smash the like button, yeah! <laughs> Please do smash the like button if you're here. We are trying to get through as many of your requests as um as I can. And if you are new here, please do subscribe. Um, hit the like button for Sensei says James. Yes, thank you very much. Let's see how many likes we're on. Um, we are on. 25 likes, 25 watching. Let's let's get more likes and viewers. Uh, we can always do it. Let's do it today as well. Smash the likes, please. Uh, let's double check again. Maybe we've got more now. Oh, someone unliked. Okay, so that's not gone well. We'll look at that again shortly. Um, thank you, Stacey, for the super chat. Mysteries, mysterious, mysterious crypto world of smoke and mirrors, says uh, Mike. Can you have a quick look at DXYZ? 
Um, it is new so much, so there's not much to go off. We'll have a look at it now. Sensei, please can you have a look at the chart for Herbalife? I bought on Friday open and sold afternoon on a swing trade and it did well. Dustin said, yes, yes, I'm liking this one too, watching it for a week or so. I can look at her, did the merger is Fetch, Iyer, Ocean, and yes, I don't know much about it, unfortunately, Stacey. Um, I've, I've seen the news, but that's, I I, I, don't, I don't even know much about the individual tokens apart from when you used to trade. I think Ocean was uh, finance related. It was, um, what was Ocean? I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I know what Ocean was because I did hold some of their token um, and obviously Fetch AI. Um, but yes, I, I can't comment on the merger too much apart from it's, it's probably going to have some hype around it and I'll probably go up to begin with and sell off and then it probably might be one of the good coins of the of the cycle. DXYZ, let's have a look at it. I want to see if I can bring up the fundamentals on... Um, Because it's an e is it an ETF? No, it's an um, management investment. Let's see if we can bring it up on Alpha Split. X Y Z. Just seeing if we can get it on Alpha Spread. Yeah, so it's saying is there's limited data on it, of course, because it's very new. No targets. Everyone seems to be interested in this. Um, I wonder if we can find Let's have a look if we can have a look at the um, the website. No, that's not working. T it's called Destiny, is it? Wow, was it up twenty? How much was it up on the on on Friday? Seventy six percent. Wow, 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 wow. They must be doing something, right? Okay, so we do a little review on it and then put it as a, out as a video. Oh wow, yeah, this is interesting. All right, let's do it. What's the market cap right now? Six hundred forty four million. Not bad. Uh, let's do it as a video and we'll send it to Martin um, to post if he likes. Thank you, Martin. Yes, let's have a look at um, DX. YZ Destiny Tech 100. Um, very interesting. It's only been trading since um, the 26th of March. Um, we have got the chart up, which has basically been a straight line, and and and, and recently it's up 76% um, on on a day's trading on Friday. We're going to have a look at their webs, their web, <clears throat> excuse me, their website as well, and and see is it, are we early can we still get in or are we late um it's my it's one of my first times looking at this stock as well um so it'll be interesting to have a look at it together um and just see from face value is this something that might be worth having a um having a a, a deep dive into and, and look at it and, and keep it on our radar we do have a few people um we have a few people, I'm making this during a live chat and we have a few people interested in the stock and they're, they're saying, yes, please do make a video about it. So yes, we are. So this is the this is the, the stock we're looking at. It's DXYZ as a ticker symbol and it's called Destiny Tech 100. Destiny Tech 100 is designed to be an exchange listed portfolio of the top 100 high tech growth companies. Very, very interesting. Um, so it's an ETF. Or well, not really an ETF, but it's um it it's going to be a, it's basically an ETF. Yeah, sorry. The Destiny Tech One Hundred is close end management investment company registered under that one um one nine four zero Act. We intend to invest in a portfolio of a hundred of the top venture backed private technology companies, providing everyday investors to 
uh, I mean, these investors access to these private market leaders for the first time. This is very, very interesting because obviously there's all these private companies that we would love to be a part of, but because we're not accredited invest, uh, investors with millions of dollars um, in assets and, and all the other things you need to be a private investor, this is what they're, they're bringing to us. They're investing and we're investing in them. To be eligible for inclusion of the Destiny 100 Tech companies must have been vetted by the top US in, um, institutional investors um, and meet key health metrics. This is good. We want to see that. We want to make sure they're stable, that they've got a good um, solvency score and that um, they, they, they are regulated. Moreover, the companies in the portfolio will generally have reached a level of maturity and stability expected of a large state venture-backed company. That's good. You don't want you, you want to filter out all the very new ones, new companies that um, haven't been vetted yet. So Destiny Tech 100 common stock trades on the New York Stock Exchange NYSE under the ticker symbol DXYZ. So let's have a look at the break, breakdown of the portfolio details. This is looking great. So if you're loving, if you if you, if you're liking the, the sound of it so far, please do hit the like button. If you haven't already, do subscribe. Any comments you leave down below, answering as well. So we know what the ticker is. We know where it's listed. Annual management fee two point five percent higher than a lot of things I've seen, but it's understandable. Um, it's something no one's doing. Two point five percent. I would take the two. Uh, I'm happy paying a 2.5 percent fee to be um, exposed to some of these companies. For example, SpaceX is in this as the highest part of this um, highest part of the the, the the percentage terms of this portfolio. So very very interesting. So 2.5 percent to fee to be um, investing in SpaceX. I don't mind if I do. Current portfolio. They've got 23 companies right now. They're trying to get up to 100. Interesting. Very, very, very new. It's um, we are, we are, we are early to this. So thank you for bringing it to uh, our attention. This is their current portfolio as of today, the seventh of April. I'm filming this on a Sunday, so this won't change too much for the next couple of weeks. I don't imagine. Portfolio construction is in progress, and values will change. And we add as we add more companies. Data based on recently reported holdings. Number one, SpaceX. Everyone knows what SpaceX is. Very, very interesting. 34%, not a bad amount of the portfolio. This is your, you're basically investing in SpaceX when you um, buy this stock. So 34%, I think that probably will get diluted over time, but it, it makes sense why that's why that's the majority and a significant amount. Um, everyone wants to be part of SpaceX. We just saw their recent... Um, they had an event where they were talking about getting to Mars within the next 10 years or making life multiplanetary within the next 10, 20 years. They're trying to get the Starship to land this year. He's saying there's an 80, 90% chance of that happening, that the Starship will land back on the landing, wherever it's called, um, this year. So they're making big advancements. And of course, they've got Starlink, which is funding their whole project. I That's what I base my internet off. I've got Starlink. A lot of people around the world are using Starlink, and that's what's um, making the company money. Then they've got Axiom Space, 9.7%, Boom Supersonic, Epic Games, private company, a lot of people love Epic Games. Then they've got Brex, Superhuman OpenAI, 3.8% into OpenAI, Revolut, 3.4%, uh, Class Dojo. Some of these companies you might know, some of these companies um, you might have heard of. I haven't heard of a couple, but I've definitely heard of a good good chunk of these. Class Dojo, 3%, Relative Space, 2.7%, Stripe, the Payment Facilitator, 2.6%, A to B, 2.4%, Instacart, 2%, Chime, 1.9%, Public, 1.5% Jeeves, Impossible Foods, Discord, 1.2%, Klarna, the buy now, pay later, 1.2%, Plaid, and then they've got cash in 9.1%. Very, very interesting. Let's see what the hit says here. The Destiny Tech 100 takes a structural um, agnostic approach to portfolio construction, participating in primary rounds driven by the company as well as the secondary purchases from existing shareholders. We seek best e execution for the portfolio. Assessing top com um, companies at extractive prices and structures, and we have seen that our flexibility to invest in multiple class of equity, equity linked, and equity related securities enables this if, um, effectively. However, sorry, execution, however, necessitates. Uh, necessitates opportunity our team's relationship and deep market expertise also serve to um, provide every day investors institutional quality private market access for the first time very interesting i like what they're doing 
as we continue to build our portfolio of innovative and exciting companies, we will continue to publicly communicate our progress um, uh, with you and and our community every step of the way. Pro, um, progress to date. As of December 31, 2002, so the end of last year, the fund stands at approximately 90% of initial capital deployment across primary and secondary investments, including um, marquee names in space exploration, um, which is SpaceX, Entertainment, which is Epic Games at Discord, FinTech, which is Brex and Stripe, and AI, ML, OpenAI. These private companies are shaping our collective future, and we invite you to be um, part of the journey. <clears throat> Very, very interesting. That's all the information. I'm just seeing if there's any more information before we look at the chart and, and where the next entry could be. Investment strategy. The Destiny Tech 100 was simultaneously weighed heavily into two categories of, of companies. Large cap. These are companies valued at 10 billion plus, provide stability to the portfolio while sitting into high growth tech company category. They've got the media caps, which are between 750 and 10 billion. Uh, these these companies have the potential for a 10 to 50x. Interesting. Um, governance. The Destiny Tech 100 Investment Committee will take the final determination on the inclusion, pricing, and weighting of companies in the Destiny um, Tech 100 and the determination determination of fair value overseen by an independent valuation committee. If a company does not meet the inclusion criteria it will be excluded um, from the portfolio by default and can only be included by an um, affirmative decision of the board that's good to know upside opportunity metrics for many of the companies at the pre-ipo stage there may be a potential to yield a 10 to 50x return some big um let's have a drink yeah that's that's the some big claims but of course it's possible it's one of the highest growth sectors 10 to 50x return is is definitely possible um cultural health metrics financial pricing and considerations the annual reports there interesting i wonder what happens if i press um gain access Yeah, I guess they're already trading right now. So this is the chart for it. It's currently sitting at fifty nine dollars. It was up, um, up seventy six percent on Friday. Let's go into. We don't have much data. Obviously, it's been up ever since it actually opened at seven dollars. So, and it, and it has really hit seventy five dollars. So this 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 stock has already done a t um a ten x since um it started trading on the 26th of march so it's already done a 10x which is so annoying um but the good news is the market capitalization is only 644 million this this, this etf could be worth billions in my opinion um so th th there's definitely a very big chance this can be a 10 billion dollar so that's another 10x so let's have a look at the four hour time frame uh, we're going to have a, a look at some of these questions um because it's very interesting we're doing this during a live shoot um like live live show on a sunday so i'm just trying to analyze this in real time so the the trend has been up that as a person who super chatted to um to do a review of this stock, which I may thankfully did, because it's very, very interesting. It's, uh, mentioned this is going to be hard to do technical analysis because it's just been up, up since launch, and and the, and the data is only a, f a couple of weeks. Um, what I would say is you have to do your own research. You have to do your own research. Not just watch this video. Watch a lot of different videos. Go, go and read the the financial filings, um, go and see if anyone's doing anything similar. And if you come to the conclusion that you want to be invested, then it's one of those rare times which I'd say because it's so early on and you want to be part of it, let's say you want to invest, let's say, $1,000 into this stock. Deploy £250, $250 straight away. Why not? You want to be part of it? You don't want to miss out. This is going to be very volatile. It can it can do another two x three x next week. You want to be part of it. It's it's hard to say it's going to come down to this level to have your first buy zone. 
if you've done your research, you think it's very interesting, like I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to have another look at it, but most probably I'm just going to buy $250 if my if, if I want to have them. If, if I've got a thousand pounds to invest into stock, that's what I want to um, allocate to it. I will do a purchase so it goes through tomorrow morning um, in, in, in the pre-market just to make sure I'm in the stock. Um, it's one of those rare times you can do that because it's just come out. Um, it is going to be volatile. You don't know where the, the exact buy zones are. You know that the hype's going to be there. We are still quite early. It's only been out a couple of weeks. Other people are going to start catching on to the news. I think, again, nothing I say is financial advice, but you want to be in. So you do £250 now if you're doing a thousand in, in total, then when would be my next buys? Um, we can pull up a quick Fibonacci to sort of give us another idea. Um, so take it to low to high. Then you're looking at maybe, yeah, so now would be one of the, the good times to buy. So $59 or $60 first buy. Next buy, you're looking at maybe $50 buy another hundred dollars worth then you're looking at um so let, let's draw these onto the chart first buy zone we're at next buy zone would be at fifty dollars the one after that you're looking around the forty two dollars and then if you get further down you might have a deep retrace of 786 and that's about 22 dollars so those would be my buy zones. I'll be buying a chunk today, um, buying $100 at $50, another $100 at $41, and then I'll leave my $500, if I really like the stock, $22, that's where I want to put the rest of my money. This could change. Let's say next week it doubles. I've already got my £250 in. Uh, it doubles, and then it goes up to $100. Then my buy zones would all come back up. My my, my, my re-entry zone would be, um, I'll be trying to buy more at $50, um, and then I'll be buying some more at my entry point today. So. This could change, but let's say it's going sideways and it goes down. These are my buy zones for right now. Um, and then my, 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 why would I be selling the stock? You'd have to get some more market data. We're going to have to wait a, a little bit longer to know exactly where, where the best place to be selling this is. But you're going to have to start looking at market capitalization. Um, It depends what you're happy with. Let's say this does a 3x over the next couple of weeks. You might be happy with that and you might take some profits and leave some to run. I think the best way to do this is not have have a target in mind. Let's say you hit $100, you want to sell half or you hit $200, you want to sell half. Have those targets in mind. But for right now, because of the lack of um, analysis we have right now, um, lack, lack of chart data we have right now, we can't do a full analysis, but we'll keep you up to date with the stock. Um, and right now for me, it's looking like a buy. Um, I'd love to have your guys' thoughts, um, but very, very interesting. Um, I'll pass it back to you now, Martin. Thank you. Fifty-four. I don't even know when I start. I think I start at 33. I'm going to send that to Martin, so hopefully we do yeah, see what everyone thinks of this stock. DX, what is it? So yeah, if you do super jets, we would have a review for you. But this is a really interesting looking stock. Let's go back to the comments. I'm going to add this to my watch list. See any questions that came up through this? No, that yeah, that that was Martin. Um, says uh, that was Martin who commented. Um, Ibrahim Wolf, Stacey's right. Um, no, that wasn't me commenting. <laughs> I don't have access to his account. I just stream to the account. Um, what about XRP linked to stablecoin? Very interesting. Um, would you have a look at Doge? Would I have a look at Doge? Yes, let's have a look at Doge. Let's have a look at Doge. Let's do that straight away. You do a super chat, we completely divert anything we're doing. Can we have a look at what you want to have a look at? Let's have a look at Doge. Thank you for the super chat. That all goes towards supporting the show, keeping us live. Um, so Doge. Let's have a look on the weekly. Let's have a look on 
clan base. They're just looking good. <laughs> They're just looking, let's have a look at this over here as well. It depends what angle we come at this from because Doge, as you can see, our buys, we were, we were buying every time it was under six cents. Every time it went under six cents, we have it in the portfolio challenge. It was under six cents, and I think we added back at eight cents. Our buys are very much secured in a good area. We can just enjoy the run up. It drops 20%, it doesn't matter. We're enjoying the push up. Um, if you think about buying now, it's a completely different story, but let's assume you've been holding Doge and you just want to hold it for the bull run. The analysis of Doge right now would be you've accumulated, you've come out of the accumulation zone. If this bull run continues, which I, I expect it to do, it's going to continue, but not not it's not going to be a straight line up until the the, the, the peak of the bull run. When in ten days you make the most gains, the the, the the gains of the year. That's how that's how these crypto cycles work. In in about two weeks, two weeks of the whole trading of one year. It's going to be where you make the, 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 the gains. That's when you're going to make the gains. The, the gains you've been waiting for for four years, it's all going to happen in two weeks. And that's what you're what you're waiting for with Doge. Um, you've broken out of the accumulation. You've accumulated. So the accumulation phase, accumulation phase is over. You've, that's what you've been doing all the way from 2022 to 2024. The, the best time to buy this coin is over. It's finished. It's done. You've accumulated. Everyone's bought their Doge. What you're looking for now is for the retail to come in, for the good news to come in. It's for Bitcoin to go through that halvening. Um, it's for um, it's for the sentiment to come back. It's for Elon Musk, Elon Musk to start pumping it again. And that's what you're waiting for now. You've you've got past. You've you, you've you've broken your 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 trend of downwards. You, you, you're you're in your upwards trend. Um, you've passed sixteen cents. You want to hold on to that sixteen cents. Um, and then your next target in the next couple of months realistically is 34 cents when you break 34 cents there's not much stopping you going to 44 cents and when you break through 44 cents all-time highs and the reason i say 34 cents 44 cents historically there they have been um pivot points where you start coming back down there's been resistance so they can act as resistance again. You get to thirty-four cents, you might think you might want to sell some. Not only because it's a resistance area, but news normally comes with that resistance. Um, Bitcoin might suddenly dump. Um, it might go just above the resistance level of thirty-five cents. But if Bitcoin drops ten percent and you're at the resistance line of thirty-four cents for Doge, let's say Bitcoin's at eighty thousand, Doge is at thirty-four cents. Um, Bitcoin goes to eighty-five thousand, Doge is at thirty-five cents. If Bitcoin drops twenty percent, um, Let's say Bitcoin drops to sixty thousand within a few days because that's very normal in a bull market. Dogecoin because it's at its resistance level. Traders will have their stop losses there. Traders will have shorts there. Doge can suddenly drop fifty percent when when Bitcoin drops twenty percent, especially if it's at these resistance levels. So these levels that I'm showing you are here because they're more high risk. You might want to be selling a little bit at these levels. You might want to be. Um, taking um, on less risk and um, de-risking yourself, having um, stop losses in place somewhere you might want to take your profits. And then you can start looking at reaccumulation zones. That's why we're going live every single week. So let's say we get to 40, 34 cents and we suddenly drop off. I'm here to tell you, where's the next best area to buy it? Is it at 19 cents? Is that 20 cents? Or is it back at 16 cents? So what I'm trying to say is if Bitcoin's in a bull run, and it drops 20%, and you're at 34 cents on Doge, you could suddenly come back down to 16 cents. So these levels will be important just to keep in mind. If you break through 34 cents, then you're probably going to 44 cents. Um, but you just need to know where you are in the cycle, what Bitcoin's doing at the time, and keeping these areas of contested levels in the back of your mind. Um, in terms of where those are the, the targets that we can reach, in terms of, let's say we go completely Let's say we hit 200,000 um, 200, on Bitcoin. My minimum target on Dogecoin would be $1, um, $1 Dogecoin, um, and then it could go to $2, $1.50. But if Bitcoin makes, breaks through the 100,000 on the way to 200,000, when it's the altcoin season, I can see Dogecoin hitting over a dollar. And I think Dogecoin is one of those OG meme coins that you're always going to be safe with. Um, in my opinion, again, not financial advice, you're going to be safe with. Um, it's the original meme coin. 
it's going to follow Bitcoin. Uh, when altcoin season comes, it's going to outperform it. Elon Musk is behind it as well. He, he loves it. He thinks it's the people's currency, which I guess it is. Um, so I think you'll be safe with Dogecoin. I think you're going to see all-time highs with Dogecoin in the next couple of years. So that was for... for um, we'll see who it was for, but thank you for the super chat. In the man, this is the one I'm buying in on Monday. Can, uh, good, good luck, Trey K. Please do your own research as well. Just wait until you see who... Um, who this fund invest in? Yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> oh, I see the comment now. This stock sounds interesting. I'll look into it too. Thanks for bringing this one. Yes, yes, very interesting. We'll put it out with the first video and see how it does. See who's interested in it. Thank you, Dustin, for bringing DXYZ to our knowledge. Very interesting coverage. Yes, James Dollar saying, what trading platforms um, are people trading DXYZ on? Um, I imagine you can let's have a look at. Robin Hood. D Y what was it? D Y X. They need to change their name, so it's not the best. Yes. <laughs> D X Y Z. Um. You can buy it on Robin Hood. Let me show you. And this is Robin Hood. Um. So yeah, Robin Hood. Again, not too much of a market cap for six hundred forty-one million. Price to earnings ratio negative fifty one. I assume that's a little bit off. <laughs> um, the low was thirty five and the high was seventy five. Very very volatile. That was on Friday. Fifty two week low was eight dollars. Fifty two week high is seventy five dollars. And it's not even fifty two week. It's like two week high. No. Um, people also own Nvidia, Super Microcomputing, Panentia Technology, Micron Technology, Taiwan Semiconductors, and Soundhound AI. I think if Martin was doing a review and he heard the, the name of those companies, he would be like, "At least it's not the. At least it's not. It, it looks like it's a, a, a good group of um, a, a good group of companies that people also own. Um, we're not seeing any Mullins in there. We're seeing uh, high growth tech in there. So that's that's good to see." So yeah, it's looking very interesting. I'm sure Martin will also have a look at it later. Let's see if we can, while we're here, I'm going to give you the link to my Robinhood. So if you're in the UK or if you don't have Robinhood yet, please do um, consider using my link to get your free stocks. We both get free stocks, so why not? Um, let's go back to the comments. I saw Starlink for the first time, freaked me out for him, thought it was getting abducted. I know, right? Has anyone, because we, we don't do it much these days because we're all glued on our phones, but I think if you just go outside, have a little fire outside or whatever you want to do, just just look up. I guarantee you, of one hour looking up and you'll just see these lines of star uh, um, of, of satellites and it's all Starlink if you just see a line of satellites it's, it's very very likely it's going to be um, the, 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 the Starlink satellites and they look very creepy because it's just a lot a massively long line of just the bright lines can we look at SVM yes let's look at Would SVM you please look at SVM any super chats we'll look at them straight away um, we'll stop what we're doing and have a look at SVM uh you need to confirm because SVM has a few. Is it SVM Metals Incorporated on the uh, um, New York Stock Exchange where we look at SVM UK um, Emerging Fund? Or I'm guessing it is Sovereign. Or is it Silver Corp Metals or Sovereign Metals? There's a lot of um, ticker symbol SVM. So if you can give me the, the name of the um, what you want me to look at as well. So I'm just make sure I'm looking at the right thing. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to purchase a, a, a thousand worth on Monday at market open. I'm mentioning this um, because Monday afternoon might will be a buying period because it would drop one side by without doubt. I love it. It's always the way, isn't it? Uh, that's what I always say to my friends when I'm about to buy a crypto. I'm like, I'm buying in, so you'll have a good buying opportunity tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> but thank you, Trey K. So we'll all know to buy in, not in the morning, but in the afternoon. But I think I'm going to be buying in in the morning as well. So we'll see. <laughs> Not financial advice, but if you had a thousand or two to invest DXYZ, how would you do it? What would you do? Uh, 
if you do, I, I don't know if this was before I actually explained what I would do with a $1,000, but I basically explained what I would do with my $1,000 and what I think I'm doing. What do you mean, Stacey? Just type into broke and buy, just like any ticket. Yeah, you can put limit orders in to the brokerage. I would use 20% and use the rest to buy the dip, but only if it's long-term investment, not for CFD day trade. Yes, that's what I'm doing. I think I'm going to put 25% just, just in, just so I'm in. Um, because I know things like this can just continue going up. And when the market cap's still below a billion, it's it's not a bad idea. In my opinion, not financial advice. As you can see, the ticker going across the screen at the bottom, it just says not financial advice because that's not what I do. Trade K, which broker are you using to trade DX? Why is that on? Um, you're welcome, Zach. Say, let's make some money together. Um, can we trade? I'm a, I'm a, come on. Oh, yeah. Okay. TPET. Trio Petroleum, please. Okay, let's quickly... Let's skip from... <laughs> I'll come back to the comments. I oh, know we're, we're nearly done. Um, I'll, I'll come to that to, um, to that stock in a second. We're going to go straight to that again. As I said, Super Chat's come in. We have to focus on them. Um, show them on Robin Hood by View Only. Oh, View Only, is it, on Robin Hood? Interesting. Um, Rocket Alert is now looking over Sol and on the value, so it'll be a great to buy near the all time low. What do you think, Sensei? Um, better Peck, we spoke about it briefly, but if you want to become a member and give a super chat, I'll give you exactly what I'm doing with it and what I would suggest. Um, um, I'm gonna have to come back to those comments in a second. We've got super chats, so we have to get to them. SVM, did you tell me what SVM is? JJ, thank you for your first super chat, but I just need to know exactly what the name of that company SVM is because there's there's lots of ticket symbols, um, there's lots of ticket symbols trading underneath that. SVM, so we're going to have to go to um, Robin's request of TR. Thank you for doing the ticker and the company name. That always, always does makes it easier. Yeah, sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's just there's only one ticker of that. But with SVM, there was literally tens of companies with the same ticker com uh, ticker symbol. Okay, let's have a look at Trio Petroleum. We can also get it up on Alpha Spread, considering you gave us the super chat. Again, I'm not as great as the fundamentals, but I'll get it up anyway. Um, US, yes. Uh, let's just make sure I'm just getting it, making sure I've got the right one on um, Alpha Spread as well. T P T. Yeah, I don't think it has too much data on Alpha Spread on it, but we'll have it here anyway. Okay. Wow, a lot of volume came in on Friday, on, on Monday. Monday the 1st of April. Oh, this is already trading? I'm so confused. Wait, what's going on? Let me go on to the daily. Oh no, sorry. Oh yeah, all this volume was... It's where it sort of popped up and then came back down. Uh, let's have a look at what Alpha Spread is saying and then we'll do a review. Alpha Spread is saying it's overvalued by 72%, but it's telling us it's, um, its intrinsic value estimate is unreliable because it's only based on DCF value and does not use relative valuation using multiples. Um, so it's basically saying it's don't it's not the most accurate right now because we don't have too much information on it, but let's have a look at... Um, oh, JJ, thank you. I just saw it. Silver Court Metals Incorporated. Okay, we'll have a look at that straight after. And thanks for clarifying that. You didn't miss the SBC review. We're just doing a few super chats first, and then we're going to do SBC. Um, let's show you what I was looking at. Uh, so this is um, Trio Petro Petroleum Corp. Operation. Um, this is what it's saying. Financials are um, assets, 11 million. Um, liabilities, 2.3 million. Very, very, very small company, but that ratio is good. Um, Ratio is good. Of course, it's a new company. Solvency score is good. Very, very good for a 6 million market cap company. Profitability is nothing. But again, it's a very new company. Um, and what I was saying about intrinsic value is it's much lower than where it is today. 
but it was giving us the warning that um, it doesn't um, have all the it doesn't have all the information to go off. So this company, just looking at the chart, has just been going down since its inception or since the um, 24th of April 2023. So it's a very, very, very new company. Um, but, but the trend has just been down. Um, as you can see, sometimes you can trade it with just connecting two highs. It would connect that high, that high. You would see one at break trend, um, and you'd like to get in on the retest of the trend. And just that trade alone, you could be making your money because you just make 186%, and you don't even need to be holding the stock for that long. In a few days, you can make that. So let me just show you again. You can do this with any charts on stock. If you connect some the, the highs together, the, the this for in, in this scenario, it's the day it came out and the next high it had. From then on, you would just connect it and wait for the trend to um, change. You break out the trend, um, but you don't break back into the trend, so it's still valid. But the best time to be buying is not just when the trend breaks, it's when you have the retest of the trend, and the retest of the trend was here, and that's when you got your pop-up, and you make a couple hundred percent, you're happy to sell. Um, ever since that, you've, again, just been going sideways and making new lows, um, so it's not one of those stocks that you've been looking at and saying, yeah, I want to get into because the trend is very, very clearly lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. You can see all these lower highs and you can see all these lower lows. Um, there's no reason for us to, to think it's going to change. You now have the averages, which is, uh, if I tell you exactly what it is, it's what I use for everything and, and it works very well for me. It doesn't mean it'll work well for you, but it always works well for me. It's the 20 and 21 week moving averages. You've been re rejected from them, um, but it does seem like you're going for another attempt. Uh, it does seem like you're going to attempt to break the moving averages. So for me, very clearly put and very simply, you break 25 cents, great. You break 25 cents, which is where the moving averages are right now. They're not going to move too much in the next few weeks. Break 25 cents, 33 cents is the, is, is the level. Um, and it's not only 33 cents, it's, it's sort of this range where you've been, you were trading at for a good few weeks before. So it's between that and there. It's sort of the range you want to get above. You, it might be the area of resistance or it might be the area you want to, you want to move up and, and treat as support when you come back and test it. Um, it. It is hard to do technical analysis on this. It's, it's because it's very new and it's only been going down. Um, but it's, it's all about the levels. Um, so what would I say? Let's try and clear it up a little bit to keep it as simple as possible because what you want to do is try and keep it simple otherwise you'll get overwhelmed. So if you if you're holding this at eight cents, for example, you bought a, a basic all time lows, you might want to be start, starting to sell when you get back into this resistance level of maybe thirty cents because it's higher risk to be holding at, le at that level. If you if you think the market cap six million and you think this is a sixty million dollar company, then all you need to worry about is is this this big area between twenty three cents and thirty seven cents. You get above that level then you're on to 50 cents. And if you get above 50 cents, then you're on to 75 cents. So it's all these levels. And all I would be able, all I would say to you is tune in every Sunday. Um, and if there's any developments with this stock, tell me to have a look at it. Normally you don't have to super chat. Normally we're not too busy. And I'll, I'll be able to answer everyone's questions. And it, it would just be depending on where we are in the price, what we should be doing. Right now, you'll be holding um, and maybe selling, depending depending on your situation. If you bought at a low price, you might be selling because we're coming up to an area of resistance. Next week, we might have broken the, the, the moving averages and broken through the sell wall here, and then we're at 37 cents. And at that point, we might be saying, okay, nice. We've broken 37 cents. We've broken the main area of resistance. As you can see here, this is where all the trading has happened is between 30 and 37 cents. You've broken this, then it's probably very quickly going to go to 50 cents. If it breaks through 50 cents, um, depending on where we are, if we're at 50 cents, then it's a bit high risk. You might want to be selling off. But if we break above 50 cents, come and retest 50 cents, then you're going to go to 73 cents. You break 73 cents, then you're going to $1.00. Um, and if you break $1, that's exactly when it, the gains start getting better. You're going to $1.30, you break $1.30, and you're going to $2. Um, so it's all about the levels. You can screenshot this chart if you like right now, and then you can see exactly what levels uh, I'm placing as uh, important levels. Um, 
But for now, let's take it one step at a time. Let's see how we react when we go into this large area of resistance of the moving averages and between 30 and 37 cents. It is going to be a tough battle to get through that. Um, and if we do get through that, it's very good because that means for the first time in a very long time, the trend is changing from downwards to back upwards. Um, so let's take it one step at a time. Right now, we need to get back above 37 cents, really. Um, and that's when we'll be looking good. But the first one will be the moving averages getting above 25 cents. So keep an eye out on it. Um, might be a good time to be buying. But again, if, if it doesn't get through that, then, then you're looking at the first buy level being back at all time lows, maybe at 10 cents, maybe at 8 cents. Because realistically, what that would mean is you're, you're being rejected. Um, and if you get rejected, you put in a lower high. What does that mean next? A lower low. So be careful with this one. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the um, other super chat. Again, when super chats come in, we go straight to them. So sorry for delaying it, but I just need to know what it was called SVM. SVM, and that was. Yeah, it's the one. It's Silver Cop Metal Windows, New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, brilliant. If you have just tuned in, please do hit the like button. Let's have a look at how many likes we have before we do this review. 34 likes. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you very much. 34 likes, 25 watching. That's got to be some sort of record. <laughs> Silver Corpse Metal, $670 million market cap. This is 100 times bigger company than the last time we looked at. Um, but the principles remain the same. That's the great thing about technical analysis. Everything remains the same no matter how big the company is, of course, to a limit because um, it's, it's, it's more inaccurate the lower the market cap of the company, but still as valid, to be honest. So let's also have a look at alpha spread on this company just to give us some more data. As I said, the alpha spread is what we use for fundamental analysis. You've probably seen Martin use it and the, the, the referral link will be in the description. SVM. So. <clears throat> just as a quick overview before we look at the chart to give us some background. Intrinsic value is, oh, why have I gone Canadian? Let me have a look. SVM. Interesting. I wonder why it's gone. Get some because we're looking at the New York Stock Exchange, so it can't be in. Silver Corp. Well, I guess this must just be the equivalent, but in the Canadian, not sure why we, we don't have it for the New York Stock Exchange. Um, but it's basically about that as a, as a, as a round value. Um, so there's nothing too, too significant. Um, let's make sure the market caps align and then it should be the same company. Yeah, 911 Canadian dollars, um, million Canadian dollars and 670 million US. So it's the same one. Do, do, do. Revenues going up, operating income's going up, assets 792, liability 207, not a bad ratio. Um, solvency score is one of the best I've seen, 80, 89. Um, profitability is not too brilliant, but it's still looking good. Okay, so the company's legit, it's doing well. Earnings report is in 46 days, it's had its earnings recently. Um, is there a dividend on this company? Yeah, 0.66. Um, okay, let's have a look at the chart. So the company looks fine. Um, it's not been going down its whole history, which is also good. Let's just put a few levels in and then we can have a look at the significance of these levels on smaller time frames. That's a small time there, that's important. And then all time lows are there. 
then you've got this sort of area. And then there. Okay. So those are the most significant levels um in the history of this stock. Um wonder if that one should be there. Um, and now we can go over to the, see if there's any horizontal or diagonal trend lines, which I don't think there there is a clear one. Let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, there, that's something like that. Okay, uh, let's move it down to the three-day time scale so we have a better look at where we are now. So right now, what's good is we're back above the moving averages. Um, for the last couple of weeks, we've been pushing up. For example, in the last last 30 days, it's up 55%. The reason I say that is whether if you haven't got in yet, you need to be worried, am I being am I FOMOing in? Um, because 55% in, in a three weeks is is it's not normally where I like to buy a stock. Um, the other thing to be taking into consideration, this trend line that we just drew at 418 is we're coming up to resistance. So we are getting close to resistance. We are only um, about just less than 10% away from resistance at 418. We want to see how that reacts at 418. Um, if we do break above, so there's two scenarios that happen at any of these trend lines that I show you on any chart really, but for this one specifically, um, let me show you what can happen and how to trade it um, or, or navigate it. Uh, let me bring a, I keep forgetting where, here we go. So let's say we move up to this trend line. Let's make it bigger in case you're watching on a phone. You move up to this trend line and there's the resistance at 418. There's two scenarios. One is you just get rejected. So you might want to have your sell orders um, if you've already made a good amount of money around this area, maybe just below at 410. That might be one scenario where you come and you just sell off. Another scenario could be you come up to this um, trend line um, and you have a small sell off and then you go through and if you go through, uh, so you might have a small sell off and go through, or you might just go through straight away. And then the next area to be having a buying opportunity is back at the 418 because you've you've broken through the resistance, you've come back out, you've you've hit um, the the buy level again. And the way you can trade that is if you're not already in the stock, but you you don't want to risk it for five percent because you might hit the resistance that comes straight back down. The way you can trade it is once you, you don't buy it now until you go past 418 you break through it and then you can have a much more calculated risk approach where you've broken it and because it's more likely not than not if it's going to be um viable trade it's going to come back down to that trend line the area that's that's important in the history of this stock it's going to come back down test that resistance it was resistance before it needs to come back down hit that level turn that resistance into support then you've got your trade set up because you're coming back at the support you're going to have your resistance below that trade level um the, the entry point and then you're you then you're you're sort of riding the stock until its next take profit, which would be around five dollars ninety. Um, again, you want to take a profit slightly, but before the um, the levels, because everyone else will be trading like that, and you might miss out on the trade. But then you, you end up with a, a trade like that. Um, so again, what I was trying to say is, at these trend lines, you have two sort of three possibilities. One, you just get rejected straight away. And one, you 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 blast through it to the next one. And the most likely is, if you blast through, you're going to come back down, and turn it into support, and that's probably your best next entry. If there isn't much time um, for you to get in before the next resistance, which we are at right now. So I, I'd rather buy it at 417 then buy it at 378 which might sound weird but it just means i've got confirmation we're turning it into support and that's a better trade to be taking than be buying it right now um but for now it's, it's looking good we need to see what happens at the, the level of 418 if we break through it then we're looking at six dollars if we break through that the exact same situation you're looking at eight dollars um we do have this trend line going up if we do get re rejected at 418 then that my next buy level will be around where this moving averages will be at around three dollars and my next buy level will be where this trend line is at about two dollars fifty and my next buy level will be at two dollars um again if you want to take a screenshot of my levels then let me put it on the screen um and you can keep it in mind if you ever want to have another look at it then there's no need to super chat you can always just um, um catch me in next week's stream or my sunday streams not next week because i won't be live but um it's time to actually look at 
SBCE, so I'm going to do a video on that. Um, oh, bye, says um, everyone Wolf. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Stacy, okay, 35 watching, 34 likes. Martin, are you the only one who hasn't has not smashed the like? Rubbish, just kidding. You laughed, I can tell, says <laughs> Stacy. Um, what is the like button? You know what the like button is, flight channel. Please do hit the like button. Now, I'm sure it was the troll. Um, Stacey, under the uh, the video, hit the thumbs up like button to like. Thank you, Stacey. Please do do that. Um, it's the one that looks like a toilet with a toilet up. Says Trey K. I've not bought in yet, says JJ. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're looking to sort of position in. So if you haven't bought in yet, haven't bought in yet, just wait a little bit. Let's see how it reacts to $4.18 because it might react and go straight back down and you can have a nice entry point at $3. Um, so I wouldn't buy it yet until we see what happens at $4.18. It is overbought on the RSI as well. So if you haven't bought in yet, it might not be the best time to buy them. As you saw, I just showed you, it's gone up 55% in the last couple of weeks. So you don't really want to be buying when it's gone up so much so quickly. Um, you want to be looking at buy zones. So maybe you want to be looking at the first buy zone around $2.90, $3. Um, and then your next buy zone might be at one eighty seven. But if you haven't bought in yet, let me just make sure these buy zones are good. Yeah, you're looking at buy zones around $2.90. You might want to put limit orders there, $2.90. Yeah, you're looking at $2.90 and then maybe $2.30 and then $2. And then worst case, leave some in case this company goes back down to some horrendous prices of under a dollar. Um, don't, don't go all in, but those would be my three buy-in prices. Have, how, do you, how do you set trend lines and sell and buy points for yourself? I mean, how do you calculate that? Not how do you actually do it on Robinhood? That this is not the bold stock guru I expected. Yeah. Good morning, guys. Oh no, we're not like that here. We're not. We're not like all the YouTubers you see out and about. We're very realistic here. We don't give financial advice like everyone else claims to. We just read some charts give all the possibilities and we don't say everything's going to the moon and like everyone else um so stacy in answer to your question the best way to to learn how to do it is like a lot of other people who just tune in every sunday and, and and they get the hang of it um the way i trade is 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 it's the simplest way and i think it's the best way um especially for starters um it's not even because it's not just limited to trading it's limit it, it allows the best entry points for long-term investing i don't want to be trading for forever i just want i want to be long-term investing i want the best lowest scariest to enter um and as you can see it's it's mostly to do with pivot points you you identify the um the trend and and, and what you're saying is i use trading view so this is the, the thing i'm using um, and that allows me to um draw the trend lines a lot of brokerages allow you to do the same it will it'll, it'll take about 10 hours for me to explain exactly how I do every single thing. Um, but over time, you'll, you'll get a hang of it. Um, for now, maybe one thing to take away is just start with horizontal lines and where you, you can draw them where you see um, the all-time high, the all-time low would be an easy one to draw. Then the area where I IPO'd and where it's, as you can see, just, just let's focus on this one up $2 here. The, the price IPO'd here, and you can see it, it's, it's been treated as support support so that's that's a trend line because it's it's bounced off the level more than two times um and we, and we use it for everything i think i don't have enough time to explain it all but if you have a specific question do let me know nicola please okay js says hey sensei hello js um okay we have to do some videos now um because everyone's asking about SBC and, and and the main ones so let's start off with SBC. Okay, so let me get ready for this video. 
SBC 125. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Yes, let's have a look at the SBC chart. It's unfortunately not looking good at all. It's exactly as we thought. Um, where is it going to go next? Um, let's have a look. Um, if you have just tuned in, please do hit the like button um, and do subscribe if you haven't already. We, we want, I want to keep you updated on the charts every possibility I get. So if I do get the support and the likes, then I will always keep you guys updated with the chart perspective. So with SPC, we've seen all-time lows this week. Um, absolutely terrible, heartbreaking. What a great company, I thought, um, but the, it's just not being handled correctly and something's definitely going wrong for this to have a, um, a space company to have a market cap of under $500 million. Um, It's not looking good. Um, I'm just going to have a look at see if we have the intrinsic value for SPC right now. Um, to, to give you the, the alpha spread is saying the, the intrinsic value of the stock is $2. We are undervalued by 40%. Worst case, it says it can go down to $0.35. Cents. And best case, this is a $3.22, um, $3.22 stock right now. <clears throat> but this should be at $2. At the very least, this stock should be at $2. Worst case, $0.35. It's that, that, that looking like it'll be bankrupt if it ever reaches that. But remember, it can go that low. That's based on fundamentals. Let's have a look at the technicals. Um, again, it's all about trend. Don't fight the trend. The trend for SBC in the very long term, if you go on to the weekly time frame, don't find don't, all I'm going to start saying to everyone is don't fight the trend. You can see what the trend was ever since the, the highs of, of um, 2021. What's the trend been? Just down. You might have thought this would be a bad time to be selling at $10 because you just come down 50, 60%. But no, it would have been a great time to sell because the trend was down. You might have thought you've got um, $6 was a bad time to sell because you've just dropped another 50%. But no, it wasn't. Yes, it did pop up a little bit, but the trend has just continuously been down. There was no reason for us to think the trend's going to change when the trend has always been to the downside. We've made plenty of money with the stock trading it to the upside. Um, we have said that there's lines in the sand. Three dollars a line in the sand. We broke that. Two two forty eight. I remember four eleven was that line in the sand. If you've been listening to the technical lines, four eleven below four eleven. We were saying one one dollar fifty. We hit one dollar fifty. Yes, that was a buying zone. That could have been all time lows. The trend went to the upside. This is now, now we're talking about shorter term trends. Now we start looking at shorter term trends. Let's go into the daily time frame. Have a look at shorter term trends. Long term trends, short term trends. Don't fight either trend. The short term trend here was the upside. The higher lows, we were all very happy. The trend, the trend was looking good. We got our buyers in at 140, 150 is what we're looking at. The trend was to the upside, and then we faced our first big challenge of moving averages of um, resistance level. This red um, rectangle we drew in. We said we have to see how we react here. If we break through it, we might even have a short squeeze. We didn't because the trend changed. Um, then you, this is the purple trend line here. This is all about the trend. This is the trend to the upside. We broke the trend to the upside. Um, the trend is your friend, exactly, James. Um, I'm just having a look at the comments. But yes, the, 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 the trend changed. You can see very clearly you can draw a trend with a trend line like that. The purple trend line, the trend changed, and that was your final chance to get out at $2.36. Ever since that point, in a matter of a few a month or so, couple months you're down another 47 <laughs> percent it's never a bad time to sell when the trend is changing and then now you can see the trend the trend is back down lower we've been saying this for so long now the lower lower highs the highs are lower the lows are lower lower lows lower highs just trending down now um don't fight the trend uh we were looking at a possible double bottom but that's been invalidated now we're now away from the, the double bottom it looks like we're on our way to one dollar one dollar ten um that would that's the next area one dollar one dollar ten if you love the stock that's your buy zone if, if you did what was right which was buying at one dollar um forty one dollar fifty and selling it when we sold you to sell because the trend was changing 
either at the resistance or when the trend actually changed, you either went $2.65 or you sold at $2.30, then brilliant, you're happy because this is giving you an opportunity to buy again um, the company at $1, $1.10. So that's where my limit orders would be. If we get to $1.10, I'm sure we can have a quick um, um, head back up to $1.40, make a quick 30% in a couple of weeks. But right now, there's not too much more to say apart from we've broken the double bottom. We can't have a double bottom anymore, unfortunately. Um, what we're looking for now is maybe $1.10, $1 in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we'll keep you updated. Let's see how we react there. Can we go lower? Of course. Can this company go bankrupt? Of course. Do I think we're going to go much lower? I don't think so. Do I think this company's going to go bankrupt? I don't think so either. Um, but anything can change with time. The lower it goes, the more likely it gets. However, um, the market cap's 500 million. I think for the company it is, it might be worth chipping into around $1, $1.10. But again, everything I say is not financial advice. And we're going to have to see how this plays out. But I'll pass it back to Martin now. Thank you. 130, 40, 130, 40. Will we break one? Um, one should be a, a good level of support. We might break it very quickly because there might be some, we might go to like 97 cents and that, and that could be the end and that could be the all time lows, but can we break one? Of course we can break one. Do I think it's very likely? Probably actually, but do I think we're going to get much lower than $1? No, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but it's all based on, if, if the trend continues and we don't start breaking out the trend, of course we can continue going lower. Um, let's continue to the next one. Um, I don't think we're going to do too many. Let's just do, what was everyone asking about? Um, I don't want to make too much work for Martin. And there's not too much going on. I mean, Nick, tell me we've already done. There's, there's not, there's not, there's not a buy zone. It's just going up into our buy zone, as in into our sell zones. Till Ray. Till Ray, as in there's not much to report. We're just looking for our final move up to three dollars thirty-eight. Where would I buy? I'd probably buy at two. One dollar ten, one dollar fifteen, something like that would be my first buy. James says if SPC hits one, I'm gonna buy it. and good luck to you. Nicola, someone said look at Nicola. We've already looked at Nicola. Um that was Nicola. I'm getting tired now, I don't even know what to do. Oh there it is. Nicola. We bought it at fifth sixty cents two weeks ago. Um uh, we made a good I mean for Nicola, 127 is the first target, 170 is the next target. Just going to see if there's anything I need to do a video on. SBC is the main one this week, isn't it? Two earnings on the ninth. Oh, maybe we should do one for two Give everyone the buy and sells it to right. Oh yes, in two days. Yeah, let's do a video on two way then and then that, that should be enough. Dogecoin up seven percent today, congratulations. Okay, let's do a video on Tilray. Oh, Fisker, F-S-R-N. Okay, okay, let's do Tilray first and then let's look at Fisker. One, two, three. <clears throat> thank you martin yes let's have a look at tilray brands uh let's see what my targets are where my next buy zone is if you've already missed out on the stock and if you're holding it where i'd be selling um 
if you haven't already, please do hit the like button to keep updated with the um, Tilray Brands uh, technical analysis. The more likes we get, the more I know you guys like these videos and we can keep you updated. So Tilray Brands, very, very interesting. You've probably seen our videos before, if you've been in the live show before, you know that our entry point for Tilray was 163. Ever since then, we have made at, at the peak around let me give you the exact percentage we made at the peak around 84%. And right now, where it closed on Friday, 61%. So it's been a very, very successful trade. We've hit our first take profit. We've hit our second take profit. Whereas our third take profit, I'm giving you my full charts, $3.38. You always want to take your profits maybe slightly lower. So $3.26 is where you're looking at the next target for Tilray. We've got the earnings coming up probably when you're seeing this video it might already happen or it might be um in a couple of days time um it is in um, a couple of days time from the time of filming this on sunday but that will present volatility to the upside or the downside depending on how it goes if it's to the upside i'll be putting my if i was you i'd be putting my limit orders for selling at three dollars 26 for buying what two dollars it can, it can be very volatile. My, my buy orders for, um, would be at $2. My sell orders would be at $3.37. Just to have those limit orders in place in case anything drastic happens, you want to be part of it. You want to have the, that's the best areas to be buying and selling when something drastic does happen. Um, uh, so yeah, so right now the, the RSI was overbought. It's no longer overbought. It's, it's getting very close to being overbought again, but $3.27 I would say is my next area to be selling. It's, it's very clear and if we break $3.27 then $4.83. If the earnings go really well, we break through $3.27 then, then, then be prepared for over the next couple of months we'll be going up to $4.83. If the earnings goes badly then $2 could happen very quickly. Um, and that's where I'd be buying next. That is really all that needs to be said for this stock. If you're looking at the MACD as well, the momentum is slowing down slightly. So keep that in consideration. You want the momentum to continue so that it continues going higher. As soon as the momentum starts fading off, that could be a risk of the stock heading back down. Um, that is, I don't think there's too much more to update you about. Um, I will be back after the earnings to give you guys some more perspective. If there's anything in the meantime, please do comment down below. Um, but very happy with this trade. We, we have made over 100%. If you want to continue to see stocks that we can make money with, then always join my Sunday shows. But I'll pass it back to you now, Martin. Thank you. Not much to be said on that one, but just letting everyone know we're still in um, and be prepared for the earnings. Um, let's look at FSRN. Yep, it's at two cents. FSR is at two cents. Um, we did have a good day on Friday. It was up 24%. Market cap is 16 million right now. Uh, I'm sorry, I just can't do technical analysis on a stock that looks like this. Um, that's all I'm going to give you, the price of the stock. There's no way I can say going to pop up pop down it's, it's past the point of trading it's 16 million it's literally just been going down here's the stock here's the price put it in the four hour time frame for you guys there it is um the trend is downwards you're probably going to head back down to 16 cents not too much more if i can say on fsrn um and james is asking for herbalife james is always here so we have to honor his request and then we're probably going to end the show. We've been going way too long. I have overstayed my welcome. <laughs> Herbalife. So let's have a look at it. Market cap is 780 million, so it's a big one. Health and wellness products. I just try if someone was, um, was at Stacey asking about what I do. So I'm just going to do this in real time. Um, and then we're going to do 
this is how I do my trend. I've just seen the comment come through, but yeah, I do my all time lows, an area of resistance that's been see as resistance at first, it was the first resistance, then it was resistance again, then it was support, then it was support, support, so that's why it's important. Then we've got $20 uh, is the next level. And the all-time highs. Uh, so the stock has been lower. It's not all-time lows, which is good news. Um, let's see, is there anything support around where we are now? Uh, before I do the analysis. Maybe there. Yeah, so for this stock, let's have a look at on alpha spread as well. HLF. Oh, so it's undervalued. Have a life. In worst case, it should be up at $28. Best case, $36. Uh, sorry, base case, $36. Best case, $53. So I think you might have found yourself a good stock. Let's have a look at it quickly at the fundamentals. Revenues for sideways, operating income is going to start going up. Ooh. Please, please finish all your normal ones first, but then can we look at XRP and also Hadera? Of course, Stacey, thanks. We're actually going to start finishing up the show, so you, you, got, you, got, you got in a good time. So yes, we'll have a look at XRP and Hadera. Um, we have actually finished looking up uh, our normal ones. Um. Mara before having PLS. Mike, we'll do Mara as well. Um, I'm ready in the studio to go. Oh, okay, Martin. So how about we do Herbalife as well? If we're doing a full analysis, we might as well do Herbalife. So let me just send that to Martin about the timings. Well, my camera's there, a bit weird. Do Herbalife as well. So HLF. About to do HLF. 142 feet. So James, we're gonna do it as a video because I think this one's looking quite interesting. With, oh, what did I just do? I just deleted my whole window. What did I do? No, there it is. Okay, we're going to do Herbalife as a video, James, so maybe we bring some attention to the stock. Let me just get rid of all the trend lines. We'll do it again for the video. Thank you, Martin. Yes, we've just got a request for Herbalife. Um, I had a quick look at it and it's looking like it's a very interesting one which might have a high value, low risk area to be getting in right now. So we're gonna do a full technical analysis. If you do enjoy the stock or if you um, if you like what I'm doing, please do hit the like button and we can keep bringing you more information like this and keep you updated with Herbalife. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. I'd love to see if we can get 100 likes on this, um, on this video and we'll be back with an update. So, Herbalife, um, we're going to just start out by by doing the full technical analysis and that what that mean is it's the first time I'm having a technical analysis look at the stock so I'm going to be putting on all my trend lines with you guys um, so you can see exactly how I'm doing this in real time. This was a request on my Sunday show so we're doing it out and we're bringing it out as a video as well. So we're putting our trend lines at the areas that it has been contested in the past and obviously at the all-time highs. So those are our horizontal trend lines, and then we'll put one down here. Um, so currently it's trading at seven dollars. Um, it's had a, uh, it's been down quite badly this week, twenty-one percent down this week. Um, we are going to have a quick look at the fundamentals um, here. This is where, where I was requesting it, and here is where we have the fundamentals. Um, the intrinsic value, this is the software we use alpha spread. The link is in the description to get um, a referral code. But base case, this is saying this should be a $36 stock. 
Worst case, this is saying this should be a $28 um, dollar stock. That's saying it's 73% undervalued at worst case. And best case, this should be a $30, $53 dollar stock. We are sat at $7. You can see that um, we've the, 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 the revenue is in the billions, $5 billion, and it's very steady. It's not going down. The operating income starts to go um, down, uh, up sorry, in the future. And we've got the net income that should be rising. Um, we've then got 2.8 billion in assets. The issue is we've got 3.9 billion in liabilities. We've got more debt than assets, which isn't what you want to be looking at. That's probably why it's been pushed down so much. Um, and then when you look at the solvency score, it's 40, which isn't the best because of the long-term solvency is, is a bit worrying. And the profitability is, is, is pretty good. It's just a three-year average ROIC, which is not looking brilliant. So overall, the fundamentals, obviously, Martin can do a, um, a better analysis for you guys. It's, it's not looking amazing, but that, 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 that is reflecting the price. Um, the Wall Street targets are all to the upside. Some are saying $8, some are saying $20. So everyone, everything is pointing, although researchers are pointing for this to go high in price. What are the charts saying? The charts is currently sat $7, um, $7.86. This would be a buy zone for me because there's not too much lower it can go. I think the worst, worst case, this stock drops 50%. And my, my mentality has always been when investing in a stock, it might sound silly, but if it can drop 50%, if I think worst case, this stock drops 50%, then I'm happy buying it because best case, this stock is making you can two, three, four, five x your money on it. So risk to reward. If the worst case is you lose half your money, but best case is you make um, five, ten x your money, then that is always fine by me. And by worst case, I mean the, the, I would be buying more at three dollars. So I'm not going all in at seven dollars. Um, at seven dollars is my first buy price. I think it's a good area to be buying Herbalife. Um, but just beware that if it does break through, just like it's done in the past, it can suddenly break through in a th in a in a, in, a, in a space of two weeks. It can be down um forty eight percent, and then it can try to go back up, and then I'll retest the trend line. It'll be down another forty percent. But this is just opportunity because you're having lower lows. Look at this. This is this is what this trend was so great. Lower lows on the on the on the price. This was in two thousand eight. Lower lows on the on the price. Higher lows, and this is what we're trying to identify now, and that's why we're covering it now. Higher lows on the RSI, a classic bullish divergence that is giving you the go ahead to buy at $3. And in a matter of a few weeks, this stock, in, in 70 days, you've doubled your money. In, um, in a year, you've 3x your money. And this went on to the best bull run that this stock has ever been on. You went from a price of $3 to a price of $40. And this is what we're trying to look for. We actually went from $3 to the price of $61. And that's what we're trying to identify again. $7, you do have a um, an, an area that you could be trying to get in at $7. If it does come down to $3, have some money on the side to be buying at $3. But this is uh, making more money than it has before at that time so it is more under undervalued seven dollars is this line in sand if it does break through seven dollars be prepared they can come down to three dollars thirty six very quickly but if i if i had a thousand dollars i'll be putting four hundred dollars in now maybe another two hundred dollars in at five dollars and the rest i'll be keeping for three dollars thirty six um my, my levels i'm trying to be targeting will be firstly twelve dollars i might be selling $200, $300 worth of stock. $20 might be selling half my position. $36, another half. And I'll be holding the rest for all-time highs. So if you did want to have a look, these are all my targets. These, these, these levels are important, either for buying or selling. The more low risk, the lower you go. The higher you go, the more high risk. So this stock for me is a buy right now. And that's Herbalife. And I'll be passing it back down to you, Martin. Thank you very much. 148.42. So I was thinking, I was looking at the comments. Good luck, James. 
Got a few more to look at. XRP. XRP is actually one of my favorites. So I do not mind having a look at XRP. Let's have a look at it all a bit stuff. So XRP. With XRP, it trades very differently to the, just from my experience of being it. Sometimes it's about fundamentals, sometimes it's about knowledge, sometimes it's about being in the markets for a long time, sometimes it's about just knowing how markets react and what the sentiment is like. With XRP, it trades, it trades very, very weirdly. XRP, you could be holding for... It's, what, it's, it's the prime example of you make most of your gains within a couple months, within a couple weeks with XRP, with, 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 with crypto. You could be waiting four years accumulating this and you sell and you'd be out of the market for two weeks and you lose out on everything. Four years of work, you lose out in two weeks if, you, if, you don't, if you're not holding it. For example, in 2017, it was going sideways. Yes, there was a few pops and 50%, 100% moves. But in a matter of one week, so the, the, this accumulation phase was over a thousand days. In two weeks, you went up a thousand percent. That was the bulk of your gains for that year. Was made in two year for, for that hundred a thousand day period. All your gains was made in two weeks. Then again, it was made. Um, you were going sideways all this time, and within this was in twenty seventeen. Again, you were going sideways for three hundred days, and in one week, in in two weeks, you went up one thousand seven hundred percent. Then again, in for a thousand days, you went sideways. In three weeks, you went up three hundred and forty-three percent. And the reason why it went that up so little in twenty twenty-one was it was being suppressed by its court case. I expect it to be a bit different. I expect to go to all-time highs this 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 cycle because the court case is finished. So this has been accumulating for best part of a thousand days. Halving coming up. This is the year that it should go, go up. XRP, you're, you're breaking out of this trend line, going to sideways. You've been in this trend line, um, in this in this wedge. Uh, you've, you've broken out of the upside, which normally means you're going to continue going high. You've got the resistance above you at 73 cents. It could. My targets are firstly a dollar. You go to a dollar, then you're going to the last cycle's highs of two dollars. Then you're going to three dollars and then i've got targets of this stock i think i've, I've got my targets maybe on coinbase or um i think i was looking at it goes here got targets of one dollar one dollar sixty one dollar eighty six two dollars ninety three dollars eighty five dollars six dollars seven dollars so you can see and then even eleven dollars thirteen dollars <laughs> i've got targets all the way up. Maybe we don't hit the highest ones, but my targets are high on XRP, um, and those gains can happen within two, three weeks. So you have to be patient with XRP. A lot of other coins will be going higher while XRP is going sideways, but there will be a time and a place for XRP, and it's a, and a, and a, I believe it has a, t a place in a portfolio. Um, hey, what was that? Head down. Uh, and right now, I mean, it does. It, the, the, the short term analysis doesn't even matter on XRP. You just have to wait for the. Um, let's have a look and see. Um, what was the other one you liked at? Oh, Hedaro. Sorry. So it's H bar, isn't it? Yeah. H bar. Let's see what has the most data. Here we go with H bar accumulation phase. I don't know if you're holding it, then you're looking at selling at one, laddering at 116, 125, um, 130, 136, um, 145. If you haven't bought it yet, would I buy H bar? Probably not. Um, what I would keep an eye on the area I would buy it would be maybe at six, seven cents. It comes back down there. Um, as long as you're above this moving average, which is currently sat at nine cents, eight cents, you're looking good. Your target's about sixteen cents. Um, this is not one of my top picks, but but I've seen a lot of people do like H bar as well. Um, uh, what else would I say about this? The RSI is overbought. 
as well. It's not yet, but it's going to the overbought section. The MACD is losing momentum. It, it, there, there's there's other ones looking better, but it's not looking terrible. Let's put it that way. Um, your next target is sort of fifteen cents, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this might be one of the ones you might want to look into the fundamentals and see if you want to own it. But for this bull run, I'm sure it can hit fifty cents. Um, Yeah, I'm sure it can hit 50 cents. But I don't have much to say about HBAR, unfortunately. Um, M-A-R-A. Marathon Digital Holdings. This is good. This is good, 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 good. I like Marathon Digital Holdings. Um, let's have an analysis on it. Another OG mining firms. Just having a look at the analysis of the stock. Just drawing up all the trend lines. Somewhere up there. Stock does trade a bit weirdly, doesn't it? All over the place. Okay, so where are we now? Um, unfortunately, we're actually below the the moving average, so I'd be very careful. This could this could really suddenly accelerate down to the downside. Um, be very careful. We're, we're losing the moving average, um, so it might give you a buying opportunity um, at around. Let's draw a box for the buying opportunity because this could suddenly go up. We go down suddenly around ten dollars. You can might be able to pick up some of this stock. Um, the market cap right now is um, five billion, so it would be nice to be picking this stock up at around eleven dollars. So yeah, I'll be buying the stock at eleven dollars. I'm a bit worried. We we've broken through the sort of resistance. We've broken through the support. Eleven dollars seems to be next. If we do get back above the moving average at twenty dollars and back above the resistance at twenty dollars, this could quite easily go to thirty dollars and fifty dollars. This is why trend lines matter so much. That if I was you, I'd be keeping a good eye on the twenty dollar, um, twenty dollar level. Of course, the halving coming up. So you might that's what you said in the super chat. So you might want to be getting into this. Um, it, it depends. It really does depend. You've got it's, um, the technicals don't look too good, and that's all I can comment on. Of course, the halving is coming up, but if the technicals aren't looking good, this can come down to eleven dollars very quickly on the day of the halving, for example. Um, but yeah, there's the if if you want to get into the stock because of the halving, I wouldn't. Um, I would look at other things that are looking better. But I would keep an eye on it. I would have a limit order in at eleven dollars um, because on the day of the halving, for example, it can suddenly drop. All it needs to do is drop another thirty percent or something. Thirty percent, and you're at the buy level. Um, if it slowly over time, over the next couple of weeks, it does get back above twenty dollars, then, then then you start looking better. The only issue is I'll be very careful because right now on the weekly close we've just had we're we're below, we're below um, the moving average and the trend line. So if by the end of next week we're back above twenty dollars, then 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 you're looking good. Then it's looking fine. It's it's, it's invalidated. If you're back above twenty dollars by next Friday, then it's looking good. Then you're looking like maybe thirty dollars, fifty five dollars. But right now, right now, when we're looking at this, it's breaking down. By next Wednesday, it could, the, the it could have changed. We've only got one weekly candle confirmation, so next week it could be different. If we're back above twenty one dollars next week, then you just know to yourself. I can buy some of the stock and it's and it's less risk than buying it today. Even though the price is high, it's actually less risk buying it at twenty one dollars than it is now because you've got confirmation you're back above resistance and that's a better you've got better chances of it going higher. Um, and it, and all we're trying to do is get better chances of of winning. And if it's back above twenty dollars, then you've got a better chance of winning. Um, and that's when I'll be buying it. Um, and if you do, then first target's $32, next target's $55. And by the end of the bull cycle, you might even hit $82 like in 2021.
So good luck to you. We need to end the stream now. Just buy Bitcoin, said someone. That's one way of doing it. You might want to diversify and hold everything. Thank you, Sensei. Excellent. Thank you for suggestions. Let's put on the ending music. Tesla, we've had a look at Tesla. If you go back into the stream, it's just low highs. Oh, gold price. I think we're going back to the band. Gold, what a great tra uh, trade. The whole of the end of last year, I was saying gold is going to be going up to 20. We're so close to our target. That's amazing. Why do I see gold going? I mean, eventually we'll come and test $2,100. Um, but for now, what are we going to see? It might, it might continue higher. But yeah, I think $2,100 we might come and test. Maybe not all the way down to 2000 Um, congratulations everyone who took the gold trade can you believe it in a, in a few weeks gold is up 15% I like XRP I'll read it more about it. yeah I, I like XRP too as well thank you Mike so much for your super chat sorry if I didn't answer your questions every week your live shows get even better thank you for your efforts to keep up the good work thank you James thank you very much Sensei which crypto do you like the most XRP actually thank you Sensei says Stacey thank you Stacey for the super chats and support we want to pull back, says um, thank you, says Mike. James007, thank you for the live show. Say, excellent show tonight, thank you. Thank you so much all. I love doing the live shows. I um, <clears throat> uh, really do enjoy them. Really do enjoy them and, and, and thanks for all being part of it. Let's see how many likes we've got in the end. Everyone's saying 66% chance of a green week. Interesting. 39 likes, 26 watching. Thank you, James, for the suggestion of the lucky miner. We'll have a look into that. Rivian double bottom. I think Rivian making you low, no? No, it could be. I mean, Rivian under $10 billion is, I think, it's much better buying it here than whenever we're buying it at $150. Of course, it is. Um, so if you ever liked it, it would be a good time to buy now. Hit the like button twice, I would. Thank you, James. <laughs> okay, amazing. Thank you all. Um, I won't be here next week, but the week after. Um, any questions, do let me know in Discord. I can always answer your questions. Um, but until next time, please take care of your money, your crypto, yourselves, and each other. Bye-bye.